there's something that I pretty consistently forget to talk about when I am interviewed about Gnosticism. I really like to tell the story about the creation myth and the demiurge and the archons and how we're trapped here in this world of matter and uh, evil and awfulness. But I never really remember, for whatever reason, uh, maybe because I'm so excited about the story itself, I never really remember to talk about the second, the second half, which is the, uh, the optimistic part, the, the solution, the, you know, what we can do about it. Gnosticism is fundamentally, at its core, highly optimistic. We like to make a big deal out of the world-hating dualist part of it, and that is part of it, but it's not the end of the story. It's the beginning of the story. As Gnostics, we view the world as flawed, and we view the Creator as at best mistaken and at worst outwardly hostile to humanity but there's a whole layer of divinity above both the world and the creators and rulers of this world that are that are reaching out to us that are crying out to us so, so that we can escape our our lives here our prison and to realize the kingdom of heaven here on earth. The fundamental moral of the story is that there are beings who have been traveling to our plane of existence, our created manifest universe, since the first humans, according to the story, uh, that have been coming here in order to save us, in order to wake us up and to tell us that this is not all there is, that despite the fact that this is very nice uh, a lot of times, this is not the entirety of the story, this is not the whole of reality, this is just a small portion of it that we exist in, that we see and we experience with our senses. There's an entire layer of reality that goes above and beyond, way above and beyond all of this. And the job of these Hierophants, these Morpheuses, <laughs> these uh, these beings that come to awaken us. It's it's their job to show us how wrong we are or how limited our perception of the world is, and we don't get to we don't get to that fullness of perfection without their assistance. But the good news is that they're here all the time. They're always talking to us. That we have their um, we have the record of their teachings in the various scriptures um, and, and, and all of that that are available to us. We have people who are making movies about this awakening experience and maybe they don't even know where it's coming from themselves, but they are assisting us in our own fundamental awakening to the reality of our situation. And that's why it's good news. That's why it's fundamentally an optimistic religion that, yeah, things are pretty bad right now, but the, the good news is it can only get better. It, it must get better, and the, the whole of the universe is designed to help us to be better. The savior figures from whatever mythos you want to talk about or use at any given time are just constantly screaming at us just to wake up, to, to realize that you have a spark of the divine within you. More than that, 
your true self is that spark of the divine and the external trappings of your world, of your physicality, of your emotions, of your personality itself are less real and less important. The most important thing that we can do as Gnostics is to listen for this voice and to be open to receiving that knowledge when it happens, that Gnosis. The spark of the divine is like a flame burning inside your heart. But your heart is encased in all of the cruft of the world. The, your, your emotions and your passions and your day-to-day -day life. All of these things, while essential to being a human being, are getting in the way of that fire within you expressing itself to the world. Now, you can't stop paying your bills and go, uh, you know, live in a cave somewhere. Well, maybe you can. I can't. Uh, so you need to continue to be a person in the world, but you need to distance yourself from those parts of it. You have to constantly keep things in perspective. The true nature of reality is that divine fire within you, that, that spark of the divine that exists within every person. And if you go about your daily life from that starting point, you will see the optimism of Gnosticism. You will see the fundamental joy that exists in the world just by nature of the divinity that is within everything and within all of us. I know we often get caught up a lot on the Gnostic Wisdom Network and in the intellectual parts of Gnosticism and the historical and the theological and all those things are a lot of fun. I enjoy <laughs> talking about them. But at the end of the day, if Gnosticism isn't making your life better, you're doing it wrong. It's very hard to start from that point of Gnosis and to work outward to the world from that still center. But it's so crucial and it's worth practicing every single day. And you'll find that once you do, all of this gets easier. Not to say there won't be hard times and there won't be sadness and misery at times. But you can rise above anything through Gnosis. I really want to make sure that you know that. And I want to make sure that we spend some time here on this channel talking about the good news of Gnosticism and to help you express that sacred flame out into the world. And I hope that, that we can do that. And I hope that you can do that. And I will see you next time.